Welcome back to Power Hour, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Eight minutes after the hour. Our guest today is Dr. Ron Paul. Former representative, wish he was still there. Ron Paul joins us today. I think everybody on this program knows who he is and why we have been wanting him on the program so much. He's written 10 books. A lot of people don't know that. Gold, Peace, and Prosperity, Abortion, and Liberty, The Case for Gold, uh, Freedom Under Siege, A Foreign Policy of Freedom, so many good books. And now the Ron Paul Channel, which we're going to talk about also. Got to see and sign up for the Ron Paul Channel. And uh, with that, I want to just say how pleased we are to have him join us. But first, this in honor of Dr. Ron Paul. <laughs> That is dedicated to you, sir. I'll tell you what, there's nobody that respects a flight surgeon like a flight nurse, and so I thank you so very much for joining us today. Thank you. (laughs) Absolutely appreciate your joining us. You absolutely did a number on that Al Jazeera interview last night. You smoked them, sir. It was incredible. Well, thank you very much. It was, uh, you know, questioning a little bit because Al Jazeera is new. Nobody knows exactly where they're coming from and where they're going. But if they wanted to hear my views, I was quite willing to go on and talk about them. It was incredible. And you said it like it was. You didn't mince any words. We're going to try and get that in our email blast because that was worth everybody seeing. You know, Ron Paul Channel now, we have the opportunity to continue the Ron Paul information. And what? let me just ask you, what was your motive? Motivation behind starting the Ron Paul Channel. What do you hope to accomplish by this? You know, I've been involved in public affairs since the 1970s. I ran for office just for a place to talk about economic issues and foreign policy. I really didn't expect a political career. So I was in and out of politics for all those years and finally left, but I'm still interested in policy. And, uh, you know, breaking into regular TV is something else, and, you know, they're sort of biased in one direction. So I didn't expect much from there. So I thought, well, in this day and age, uh, we ought to go and look at the Internet. And the Internet was uh, a very, very worthwhile tool for us in our, you know, presidential campaigns. And a lot of it was spontaneous, people just looking to the Internet to get information. So several people came to me and asked me about doing something on the Internet. That's how the ideas got started. And we've been doing that for approximately a month right now. And you can sign up for the Ron Paul channel. Support it, ladies and gentlemen. He has some amazing guests on that program. Amazing guests. So let's keep that going. That is the information channel that we can continue with Dr. Ron Paul. We're looking at Syria now. We're looking at a war that has been concocted or created or agendized, which I believe, by an alleged president who uh, thinks that we need to go into the Middle East and basically control all of the Middle East. What are your thoughts regarding whether or not Assad did it? Because I personally, and it doesn't make any difference what I think, believe this was a created situation. Your thoughts on that, sir? Well, I I agree with that. I think it's a false flag. I think somebody else other than Assad did it. But uh, regardless of what they do in their civil war over there, it doesn't change my opinion about what we should do. Uh, I don't think we should be involved in war unless somebody attacks us. Uh, and uh, nobody has attacked us. Syria is not going to attack us. Uh, Iraq wasn't going to attack us. Uh, the Afghanis uh, weren't going to attack us. And yet we've been in perpetual war. Sometimes it's hard for me to understand because it seems like uh, it, it is so unwise uh, for them to do that. And it always ends in chaos. It's almost like, is it chaos that they desire, or are they so ignorant to to the Middle East, or what's going on? Anyway, every time we get involved, things get worse. I don't think we have a justification morally, uh, legally, or constitutionally to be involved over there. And right now, I'm a little bit optimistic that the American people are waking up and telling their politicians, no more war. Well, you know, I think we give them too much credit for being stupid, and I don't think that's the issue. I think what's happening is that there is an agenda afloat, and now we're looking at them attacking Syria and Iran. I mean, it's like uh, chemical weapons are okay as long as the United States owns them, contrary to the, you know, and possesses them. And it's okay if we use them, you know, and we've had several instances where the United States has used it. Nobody's talking about that, John Kerry, for sure. 
but the idea that it's okay to go and kill them with missiles, like, you know, uh, uh, well, with missiles or depleted uranium or whatever. It's okay to kill them with that, but not with chemical weapons. I mean, the ultimate in hypocrisy. It is. It's, it's a hypocrisy. And where, <clears throat> where we get a problem is, of, of course, we who are willing to criticize our own government, then they paint us with a price and say, well, well you're un-American, unpatriotic, and all that kind of thing. Yet I, tr- I truly believe if you're patriotic in a good sense, that you will complain about our government when it's doing the wrong things. But, you know, right now they're going to have all these videos of children. We'll prove nothing other than the fact that children have died. But will they show pictures of the rebels that we're allied with now killing Christians? Will they show that video where the al-Qaeda rebel types captured some Syrian soldiers and just had them bend over, kneeling on the ground, and systematically go behind them and put a bullet in the back of their head? They're not going to show that and say, that. oh, these are our friends. These are the people that we're trying to help out by destroying Assad. So, yes, hypocrisy, you know, is, is a good term, and it's disgusting. But the other part is, is it's disgusting because when push comes to shove, whether it's economics or foreign policy, leadership in both parties come together. Just look at it. You know, Nancy Pelosi and Boehner, who are supposed to be these vicious enemies, political, fighting all the time, they're out there trying to um, beef up support uh, uh, for the war. And uh, this this is what bothers me. But what is good is there's an element in each party now coming together. You know, Tea Party libertarian types coming together with some progressive Democrats who are trying to be a little bit more honest and try to break away from this partisan stuff and, and say uh, that, uh, this is totally unnecessary and we shouldn't be doing it. You know, you surprised me when you said that you never went to the secret briefings, the classified briefings. That made so much sense because it was nothing but propaganda for the war. But so much is propaganda in this government. And I think that there is probably a secret cabal of people behind Obama who really dictate what's going to happen. And he kind of carries it out because that meeting in St. Petersburg, you know, he got there for a photo op, shake hands with uh, uh, Putin, and that was pretty much it, turned around, and in a very expensive flight back home. You know, this is all agendized. There is no real government. There's a lot of people that are out there for their own interest, it appears, and I, I'm pretty scared for the future. A couple of questions I'd like to ask you, and, and these are very direct questions, but I want to know, I mean, I know you're no nonsense. Is our economy coming down? Can we su- sustain this any longer? No, it's, it's going to get much, much worse. The big question is, is who's going to pick up the pieces? But they cannot, they cannot rebuild by doing exactly what we've been doing for 30 or 40 years that created the crisis. So, yes, it's going to get much worse. It's worse than they portray it. Uh, you know, the, the poor are getting more numerous. The rich are getting richer. And uh, the middle class is disappearing. They cannot reverse this because of the debt overhang, and you can't improve it by just accumulating more debt. So I think it's going to get much, much worse. And, and it is, you know, the economy is connected with the foreign policy. If the United States lose credibility and people lose confidence in the United States, maybe they'll lose confidence in the dollar. So something could happen here, you know, in the next year or two where you would have a much worse situation than we had in 08 and 09. But at the grassroots level, people are studying and reading and rejecting Keynesianism. They're looking at Austrian economics. They're looking at the gold standard. They're looking at personal liberty and a different foreign policy. If we can get an attitude of the people to support those views, we could rebuild. But right now, uh, on the short run, we have to look for things getting much, much worse. 